Yeah, I was just going to say that Russell Brand in 2015 uh, urged people not to vote either for Labour or the Tories, uh, saying that it didn't matter, and that, and subsequent to that, Ed Miliband, the party leader, met with him and he changed his mind. Um, the guy is always um, yeah. on both sides equivalents, and you know it's been a long time coming this sort of crap from him. So uh, I would encourage people not to take him too seriously. Yeah, uh, I, I, he just plays to the room. I, I think that whole point with Miliband was revealing. Like he's he 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 sort of gravitates towards this apolitical like uh all sides are the same it doesn't mm -hmm. matter man which is like a real tendency that like i think people like jimmy Dore and stuff um speak to um and but like i do think like genuinely like he's a guy who like i guess what they call it signed on in the uk like he, he was benefit of, of beneficiary of welfare policies he wasn't rich growing up as far as i understand um so he like does have like some uh, like he'll he'll side with Corbyn and Sanders, right? Like, like that is genuinely where his like certain class sympathies lie. But he's in this uh, audio, he's in this sort of um, um, sort of podcast world, an audience world where he it's it's playing to his worst sort of and impulses. Appreciate the call, and I will also add that um, you know one of the things that you don't have to do if you're convinced that both sides are exactly the same and they're all bad. You don't have to do shit. You don't have to read. You don't have yeah. to think about this stuff. It is completely knee jerk. It is completely knee jerk. You can sit there and say, you know, um, a, a statistic 50,000 people die a year because they don't have health insurance. But you also then have the ability to completely ignore the fact that, like, 600,000 more people just got health insurance because of a tiny little provision that we never even really contemplated in the uh, American Rescue Act. Like, you know, both those things, you can sort of like ignore one of them because you don't really care. At the end of the day, you don't really care. And if you want to make an accelerationist argument based upon some type of like uh, revolutionary principles that you have, you know, make it, but make it explicit. How many people have to die to convince people that people shouldn't die? And also, cite some examples as to why you think that's going to work. The accelerationist argument was why Donald Trump was going to be so helpful for everybody. And you can go back to uh, the debate that I did with uh, Jimmy Dore at that time, only because that's the, you know, but I, I was making this argument throughout that entire summer. I've been through this before. I've been through it after Reagan. I've been through it after Bush. And if the best you're getting after two uh, terms of George W. Bush was Barack Obama, you weren't going to get much better after Donald Trump. Biden was like marginally better than I thought it would be, frankly. But I think it would be garbage. And it just doesn't work that way. Or I haven't, or the, let me put it this way. All the evidence I've seen is it works the other way.